roller coasters were some primal thing that <laughs> snuck up on me in a way, and it, it felt awful. <laughs> There's no better way to kind of pull you out of something and ground you in the present moment than your children because they they need you to be present. And they don't care. <laughs> they don't, they don't, don't care. Some jobs, some roles are just a lot of fun to do and this was one of them. Elizabeth and Patrick, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I'm very excited to talk about love and death. I have done all a wife is supposed to do. I'm very attracted to you. Oh. Would you be interested in having an affair? I just don't want anybody to get hurt. Elizabeth, how would you describe Candy Montgomery to someone who's never heard this story before? I I really I really think she is a woman who is constantly wanting to get something more than what she has and believes that that is going to lead to better life experience and that is a very strong basis of her value system. And I think that leads her to make questionable choices. It is human nature to take risks to go for something with a little thrill at the risk of falling. We can never allow Betty or Pat to get hurt. Never, ever. My heart really went out to Pat Montgomery in this uh, this show, just so blissfully unaware of the events that took place. What drew you to this character? Um, I would say it was it was probably the project as a whole. It it was an offer, which is kind of abnormal for me. I usually... um, I usually go out and audition for the stuff that I'm in, but the fact that they come to me made me feel very nice that they were going to include me in a group of actors that I was really excited about. How did you prepare to play a, a married couple? Did you guys bond? Did you prepare ahead of shooting? So we met because we had to record choir songs. There was a nice, uh, it, we we get along well, fortunately. As we people. Have, yeah, as people on the day. That's a good trick. And uh, and we have good rapport, and that started to work its way into the scenes naturally, and that gave us the the kind of ability to fill out the rest of the stuff that we don't see on screen, and say like these are two people that maybe from the outside have stuff together and have such great rapport, they're able to laugh and be uh, you know fun and light together, but there is an intimacy and a real you know partnership that's missing for both of them that, uh, that contributes to this sort of absent, uh, type of, uh, relationship that they have in the show. You always want more. You do candy, whatever you have, you always want more. Yes, I do. I do want more. And I'm not going to apologize for it. I want more from me, from you, from us. Let's go to marriage encounter. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, let's go. Elizabeth, you have a fear of roller coasters, and I know you had to ride one in one of these episodes. Um, Mm -hmm. Any other hard limits or fears you faced on set? I guess I don't like driving a car with a green screen behind me. That's a limit. And a <laughs> that's fear. just ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. <laughs> uh, that's that's one. I don't know. I don't really have a lot of limitations if I think it works for a story. Mm-hmm. But um, roller coasters were some primal thing that uh, <laughs> snuck up on me in a way. I knew it wasn't going to be comfortable, so I asked for a stunt double. My stunt double, CCI, who does like amazing things with her body. I asked her to ride roller coasters um, because I knew I only wanted to do it once because I was scared. But when I got there, I didn't realize how scared I was. Um, and it was pretty embarrassing, actually. Uh, and then I could laugh at it. But there, it was really um, shocking uh, how terrified I, I became. And it, it felt awful. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really did not... Uh, I wasn't, I wasn't ready for the reaction I ended up having. We appreciate you doing it. I mean, it was a great scene. All right, Patrick. So I feel like I need to mention Almost Famous. I mean, it's such an iconic film. It's also set in the 70s. 
Was that fun for you to revisit that decade? Man, it's two completely separate tones or filters on the period. Um, but that type of stuff is always pretty interesting. There's there's a little bit of a difference in the way that people speak and the way that they move and the way that they relate to each other. That stuff is always very interesting. Um, the clothing is very interesting. I don't enjoy wearing it. I enjoy wearing my own clothes. <laughs> But so uh, you asked for your shorts to be shorter. Oh, yes. <laughs> Short shorts, high waist pants and those glasses was Love it. necessary. <laughs> Love it. Well, that's all the time I have. But I just wanted to say thank you. It was great talking to you today. It was a blast. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Jesse and Lily, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Thank you for having us. Yeah, of course. Thanks. What was it like to portray real life characters in the show? And what were the influences you used? Reading the scripts and seeing David's take on the story. It was just really exciting finding some humor in the circumstances, but not making fun of these people. And just felt like there was a lot of a lot of room and a lot to uncover, which is always exciting. Candy, I heard about uh, you and Sherry Kleckler are talking about a uh, rediscovering yourself. Wait, did I hear that correctly? Yes, you did. And what does that entail? Well, Sharon and I are starting a business together. Home improvement. Oh. Lily, how about you? You know, it's so unbelievable what happened, but it happened. Um, so it's, it's really looking at all of the steps that led to that moment and, and just how delicate and nuanced that path is and how I think up until the very last second had any had any one thing gone slightly differently uh it wouldn't have it wouldn't have happened and I think David did a really remarkable job looking at that Betty Betty Betty's dead oh my god so I know some of the scenes were just so violent and graphic, you know, was there something that you had to do to kind of manage that negativity at the end of the day? Oh gosh, I wish I knew how. What did you do? <laughs> <laughs> I was, I, you know, listen, I, I, I'm not going to lie. Those, the days of shooting that, um, that final scene, which it was uh, a number of days, it wasn't, I, I wasn't able to kind of leave the headspace in a way that, Listen, I have kids. I think yeah, there's man. there's nothing there's no better way to kind of pull you out of something and ground you in the present moment than um, your children because they they need you to be present and they don't care. <laughs> they don't, <laughs> they don't care doing. because they are we want a snack. <laughs> um, but I didn't have anything to do at the time. But I did set I did spend some time after after shooting um, to kind of sort of as 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 gracefully as i could disconnect from from the telling of the story and from from betty and um it, it was kind of a process actually all right well that's all the time i have but thank you so much for talking with me it was it was an absolute pleasure thank, thank you. you so much thank you hi tom kristen thank you so much for hanging out with me today yeah, yeah you too kristen what drew you to this project it was the combination of all of the ingredients make it so premium and, and so elevated and a sexy project, right? So you have David E. Kelly, Leslie Linka Gladder, who is somebody that I had been dying to work with and is one of my favorite female directors. She's been like just dominating the game in television for so long. And then Lizzie Olson, who's fabulous, Jesse Plemons, Lily Rabe, Patrick Fugit, this one, and you know, it just uh, such an A-team and HBO and Lionsgate and Nicole Kidman, you don't say no. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's always the same. It just starts with the script and these scripts were absolutely incredible. And, you know, I guess no surprise because they're written by David and then, you know, work with HBO, which is always uh, a treat and you always feel like uh, you're going to be doing something good. So, yeah, like Kristen said, it pretty much had everything you could hope for in a in a show. And then it turned out really well too. Got to see it the other day, so that doesn't always happen. Right, you never know, and things know. Out, nothing ever turns out like great. <laughs> <laughs> it's not every day that that happens. Like, There's always going to be some disappointment. Yeah, yeah. Not, not here. I was, I was proud of everyone. Me too. I love the show. Did the police read you your rights? 
No. I'm gonna pay a little visit to the police on process. Meantime, I want you to call all the women at church. Everyone who saw you at Bible school last Friday, ask them if they remember what you were wearing. What? Why? For you to have done what they're suggesting, you'd have had blood all over you. I want to establish a record that you look normal, and you'd be surprised how fast memories can fade, so do this today. Dawn. And no communication whatsoever going forward with Alan Gore. <sighs> How did you prepare for the role? I mean, I saw shades of Vinny Gambini, uh, you know, with all the tension between <laughs> totally, the, right? totally. the, the judge. Um, I mean, was there any influence there? You're saying Vinny Gambini for my cousin Vinny? Yes. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's great. I wish, I wish I thought to steal a bit more from Joe Pesci. The script is amazing. And it's like, the more you learn about the guy, the more I learned about Don Crowder, the actual human being, the more exciting I became to play him. I love the guy. I love sort of what he stood for and and the man he seemed to be and the way the people knew him best spoke about him. It was just fun. You know, like some some jobs, some roles are just a lot of fun to do. And this was one of them. I mean, I loved it. And like I said, I know that wasn't your intention, but I had total my cousin Vinny vibes. So, oh, my great. God. The yeah. two youths. <laughs> youths. Do you mean youths? Right. As I butcher the scene. <laughs> so, Kristen, quick question for you. I mean, I'm a huge Jessica Jones fan, one of my favorite Marvel shows. Um, I'm sure you're tired of hearing of this, but no, um, I'm not. Oh, yeah. oh, good, good. Definitely not. <laughs> Thank you. Is that something you'd like to revisit? I mean, if not Jessica Jones, maybe another superhero? I mean, I would be there in a second for sure. Who knows what will happen in the whole world of things. But um, yeah, I had such an amazing experience playing that character. You know, it's not every day that you play a character that's really cool and fun and smart and tough, but also resonated with women and girls and men too um, in the way that that character did. So it wasn't just like a cool acting gig. It was like important to me and um, to a lot of people. So um, yeah, I'm so proud to have played such a such an iconic, fabulous character. That's amazing. I'm glad to hear it. Um, I think that's all my time, but thank you so much. It was great talking to you both. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. Man, they get to go to their jobs. We just stay home and God, that's supposed to be enough. You always want more. Oh. You do, Candy. Okay. Whatever you have, you always want more. Yes, I do. And I'm not going to apologize for it. It is human nature to take risks, to go for something with a little thrill at the risk of falling. Oh! Are you okay? I'm fine. Are you sure? Would you be interested in having an affair? We can never allow Betty or Pat to get hurt. Never, ever. I would love to have you and Pat over. She wants me to cook now. You need to be careful. Betty! Betty? Betty's dead. She was murdered with an axe. An axe. More than likely, Betty Gore was murdered by someone she knew. Did you kill your wife? No. I did have an affair with Candy Montgomery. Are you all right? Yeah, I'll not be all right. You just chopped and chopped and chopped. I didn't do it. I think you did. You're wrong. Texas. Hope I might be able to forgive murder. Adultery, not so much. The jury needs to see you as human. And the truth has a way of coming out.